Hello, a great welcome to the series on Abacus, myself Jaraj and P. This is part B of tutorial number 8 and review the results for the Abacus model generated in part A. The problem statement is already explained in part A and therefore it will not be repeated here. So let me take you directly to the Abacus. Okay, fine. Uh, so the model was developed in part of the tutorial and uh, it was calculated. Now let us start reviewing uh, the results uh, provided by Abacus. So we have uh, requested for uh, different field outputs. So let's uh, directly review first of all the stresses. So that is provided by the primary variable S. So let us first review the volumized stresses. So this is how the volumized stress distribution looks like. As you can see from the legend box, so you, you can see that uh, the volumizers and stresses have reached a maximum of 357.9 MPa, means that the material have already yielded. We know that the yield stress is uh, 355 MPa. This indicates that the material has already yielded, as clearly indicated by Abacus in the red color. And if you see the elevation, you can see that uh, the standard, you know, the spreading of the plastic zone. Uh, towards the center of this beam so you can see that the portion that is already indicated in red for the web portion has already yielded because in this portion we have seen that the stresses are very clear to the yield stress now again if you look at the flange also we find that a significant portion of the flange has also yielded this indicates that the abacus has provided the results um, as um, expected Okay, so this is also very important in Abacus. We need to have a, a feeling of what the results should be. Now, having uh, seen the variation of the volumizers and stressors, let us see also how its components changes. S11. So as you can see, that S11 basically indicates the longitudinal axial stresses in the portion uh, that is basically set up because of the applied load. And here again, you can say that yes, it's a S11 components. They have reached the maximum value of 371. So it means that these are the all yielded portions. So there's a blue as well as the red color. So, and then if you see, the, for example, the other component, that is, for example, the S22, that should provide you the stress components in the flange portion. Yes, you can say that. The stresses in the flanges, you can say that the maximum and the minimum is 391. Okay, and minus 403. Okay, so these stresses are far above. The yield stress, that's why uh, we need to um, see this in nonlinear behavior in the load deformation plot as well. So, this is how the stress components S11, S22 changes. Now, let me take you to the other variable that is basically the I think the yes, the displacement. And the displacement, let us see the displacement in the y direction that is in the two direction. So, U2, so as you can see that yes, so the diffraction. Uh, you can see that this is a maximum in the center that is indicated by the blue color that is equal to minus 10.21 uh, millimeters. Please remember that this is a total deflection of or deformation of minus 10.21 that consists of a, a linear part plus a nonlinear part. Therefore, this value should not be directly checked with the standard formulas available for the elastic analysis. Okay, now here if you want to see this model without. Uh, uh, for example, the meshes, uh, there is, I think, a provision somewhere here. I think probably the common part options. Yes, here we can see that right now we have selected exterior edges. Suppose you don't want to have any exterior edges. You can, uh, for example, uh, go for the feature edges and apply it. Okay, so we have this uh, portion without any meshes. And here the, we find that the transition is smooth also. Now, suppose you are interested in uh, finding how the Deflection profile of the beam has changed over uh, different periods of time. You can go over this frame selector. Okay, here you can say that because, okay, right, so we can say that yes, it gradually increases as the time frame changes. Okay, you can say that yes, the deflection increases, increases gradually, and now it has reached the linear, non linear portion. Okay, this is how the deformation has changed. Okay, the deformation has changed over. The various frames of the time chosen. Now, uh, uh, we would also like to extract 
the load versus the diffraction data because this is the final result where the researchers or the engineers are also interested because that provides us a clear cut information regarding the linear stiffness as well as the nonlinear or the post elastic stiffness we normally call it as. So, in order to obtain the XY data, it is very simple. What we can do, go is, do is we can straight away go to this XY, create XY data. Okay, so press this XY data, and we know that uh, the deflection that is already available in uh, the our ODB file. So, means that the source can be taken as our ODB field output. So, we can say that continue. Okay, now here as you can see that there are two portions one is variables and the other one is the element or nodes. So, variables means uh, which data we want to extract. Obviously, right now we want to extract the U2 deformation. Okay, that is the deformation at the mid span in the y direction. So, let us just select that data as it is there. We are already there. So, yes, U2. So, we have already selected the U2 data. Now we have to tell Abacus uh, which are the nodes for which the data is to be extracted. Okay, so go to element uh, elements or nodes, and here there is one thing known as a node labels, and here you can just straight away write down the node label for the mid span. We know that it is a reference point RP1. So this means that we can now save this data. Okay, save the data. Okay. And if you want to see, you can also plot the data directly on the visual uh, means the visualization part. Look here. So this is how over the various uh, time frame because we know that the total period assigned for the analysis was uh, the time step was zero to one second. And we can see that yes, the displacement gradually increases, right, linearly up to some particular value of the displacement. For example, say eight mm. And then you can see that obviously there's a sudden drastic change in. Uh, the uh, sloping portion of this linear segment that is obviously which indicates that the yielding has already commenced at this point and we have got a post elastic stiffness. So now let us start importing this data into Excel and create a part that is acceptable. So if we are interested in preparation of some papers and all we can make use of this data. So what we can do is we can still go to this XY data. Okay, just double. You can just edit it. Edit this. Okay. So here, as you can see that, yes, so in the first column, you will find that the values range from 0 to 1 second. So this means this is the time frame, okay, time frame for the analysis and corresponding to each time frame, we have the values of the uh, deflections and as expected, obviously, the maximum value of the deflection is minus 10.213. Now, what we can do is we can just copy this XY data. So I'll just copy this, click Ctrl C, and we can straight away paste it in our Excel. So let us paste it in our Excel. Click for Ctrl V. So okay. So let us quickly check it. Yes, the time frame has changed from zero to one, and the deflection maximum is 10.213. So let me just give you some kind of. So this is my time in second. Okay, time in second, and uh, let me just. My time in second. Okay, fine. So, and this is my deflection negative values. Okay, obviously, these are uh, the deflections in millimeters. Okay, so here we want to develop a P delta plot that's a load deflection plot. So, that is very simple for us. We know that the peak value of the applied load P is uh, equal to. That is equal to 800 kN, right? 800 kN. So you can just say that 800 kN. Now, obviously, if you remember, we have applied a linear variation of the maximum applied load with respect to time. So if you want to obtain the load corresponding to any time step, what we need to do is we just simply multiply this time with this load. So let me just take this portion to the next one. Just control X. Let's keep it over here, control V. Now I will define my load as the time multiplied by the peak deflection. Okay, fine. So the peak deflection it is, let me just say that I will just drag it. So dollar G dollar four, that should be good enough. Then rate. I just okay, 
okay so now we have as you can see we have the loads now for every time frame okay so we as you can see that the load that has started from a zero value it has increased linearly over the entire time period of t equal to one second and finally it has reached a peak value of 800 kilonewton so this is my deflection negative i would like to have my deflection positive also so that I, I will make use of this data so deflection this is just for our inference nothing else so deflection positive and this is also in mm so i will just different as minus of this value and i will just drag it so i have for the on this column my positive deflections so basically we'll have so this is my load in kilonewton so i would like to place deflection on the x-axis and i would like to apply as usual or deflection on the, uh, on the load in kilonewton on the y-axis so let us just insert a graph from directly from excel so let's insert it okay so let us start select the data okay so I add the data series We'll give it for example say load this to the displacement plot okay and let's select the x value obviously the x value will be our uh, deflection in positive mm so this is my deflection okay and uh, i'll select my y values as the loads that is uh, applied at the various time frames so we can have this okay fine fantastic so this is okay okay for me that's okay fine so look here so this is how so if this is uh, the response of the beam up to a load of 800 for example if you would have i have also taken the load to 825 so if you take the load to 825 you will find that this uh, uh, curve portion remains almost a flat uh, indicating that it has reached the full uh, post elastic uh, reduced stiffness okay so here we can see that the maximum load is 800 so from the plot we can say that the beam was essentially elastic up to a maximum load of around say 720 and from 720 onwards you can see that the slope have the post elastic stiffness it is a much lower than the elastic stiffness and accordingly we expect a large increase in the deflection from 8 mm to 10 mm okay, or 10.2 mm so this is how you obtain uh, the load uh, versus the deflection so if you uh, calculate p by delta that's the slope of this line we obtain the elastic stiffness and if we obtain a similarly calculate p by delta for this portion we obtain the post elastic stiffness okay so this is a one very important output from abacus okay so if uh, we go directly to the abacus you can say that we, we can also inspect many other variables over here because u1 u2 u3 and also i think that we have got the total reaction and the section forces uh, for the section forces uh, i will provide a separate video because uh, there are many queries from the people means uh, how to obtain the section forces and uh, like the shear forces at the bending moment when the structure is modeled as a yeah, as a shell element or a solid element so accordingly i will shift that to the next uh, tutorial so i think uh, that's okay for this uh, uh, part which I essentially covered the visualization module and I think that we have inspected clearly all the essential uh, okay uh, field variables such as the resultant stresses and the components deflections also we have made a load deformation plot which essentially helps us to uh, measure basically the elastic as well as the post elastic stiffness so that's all so thanks a lot